While we were there, she brought a gift from her dad, and it was a letter that he had written to me, and it was thanking me for the gift of Mary Beth. And mentioned, I know how hard this was for you and how difficult it had to be for you to be in trouble for us to have this gift, but we thank you every day. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and I'm blessed to be here with you. Hello, and welcome to this gathering of Mamas in Spirit. And as I brought us in with that intro today, I couldn't help but think, and I'm blessed to be here today with Elaine. Elaine, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Lindy. It's an honor to be here. And Elaine has very easily worked her way into my heart (laughs) over the last few years as we came to know each other originally through Casa de los Angelitos, Yes, where another Cornerstone sister, Cornerstone's a woman's retreat at our parish, another Cornerstone sister shared with me that Elaine was retiring after being a nurse for how many years? Oh, since 1976, so many, many years. Pediatric nurse. Since 1976, a pediatric nurse. And at the time, I was on the board at Casa de los Angelitos, a maternity home. And we asked Elaine if she would teach classes to the mothers at Casa. And you've been doing it ever since. Yes, it's been a wonderful journey. And Casa is a home for women in high-risk situations that are pregnant And that holds a special place in my heart. So every time I go, I am just encouraged by their willingness to continue on and their journey. Yes. And thank you for sharing that about how you're deeply connected to their stories. Right. And so today, Elaine and I are going to be exploring sacrificial love because Elaine's story intertwines one of the greatest sacrifices of love that I've ever heard of. I don't know how I'm going to get through this podcast without crying. I know. I noticed there's no Kleenex. (laughs) We can't get distracted by Kleenex. (laughs) We'll just sniffle. All right. It can just be messy. It's okay. (laughs) So let us begin in prayer. And then Elaine, if you can share how your story intertwines, that would be lovely. All right. Dearest Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with Elaine today. And we just pray for her heart, Lord. And we pray for her sharing that ultimately she feels consoled by and close to you and your Holy Spirit. And that everything we share, every word that's spoken is a reflection of you and your holy love so that we can all more greatly understand the concept of sacrificial love, the love that you gave Lord in your son and the greatest example of love, what love is at the core and at the heart of it so that we can all lead lives filled with sacrificial love. In your name we pray, amen. So Elaine, I'm just going to let you share. All right. Well, Lindy, when you mentioned that we met at Casa, as we were sitting there in the interview, I remember saying, well, by the way, I gave a child up for adoption. And at that time, you said to me, oh, no, you don't give a child up for adoption. You give someone a child. And I think, you know, many years I've had this secret, if you will. But I think through that and through different periods of my life, I've realized that it's, it's okay to share it. And it's been with me for many, many years. And there were so many people that had no idea that I had a child that I had given up for adoption or given to someone. Yes. And chosen adoption. Chosen I was thinking adoption. you chose. Yes, yes. In a sense. Yes. Yes. So um, it's been freeing of spirit, I would say, to be able to share this story with people. And you mentioned our Cornerstone retreat, and I shared this story at the retreat. And I was amazed at the number of women after I shared my story that came to me that were touched in some way by adoption or by 
themselves giving up a child for adoption. And a couple of them have reached out to me since then, and we have spoken. And I think everyone is touched by it in some way. Either they had a sibling, perhaps, that had a child out of wedlock. Maybe they themselves, perhaps they adopted a child. And it's such a gift to everyone involved. And I think in this day and age, it's a gift that we should revisit more often. Because I see, especially at CASA, these young women who choose to keep their children, but what a struggle for both. And I do think in reflecting on my journey, I can't imagine what my life had been had I not gone with the adoption. And looking back, it wasn't really a choice for me, but it was many years ago. It was in the early 70s. I was raised in a very Catholic, conservative neighborhood. Back in those days, your parents found out that you were pregnant, you were taken to the family doctor, and then you were sent away. Thank goodness for Catholic Charities, which is where my mother took me. And I went to a wonderful home out of state, and I was there for six months. So it was a very difficult time. It was my senior year of high school. I missed a lot of the activities. I would say that my relationship with people that I knew in high school was forever changed by that. The very good friends that I had are still my good friends, but the dynamic was definitely different with others. Looking back at my parents, honestly, they did that out of love and out of concern for me and for this baby. And what a wonderful gift it was to me and to this baby who is now uh, a woman named Mary Beth that has just blessed a couple in Iowa that were unable to have children. She is a mother of two, a wife to an incredible man, and she has just given everyone such love. And of course, I didn't know where she was. It was a closed adoption back in those days. But in 2008, Mary Beth was able to find me through Catholic Charities. So we have gotten reacquainted. She has been a big part of my life. When I received the letter from Catholic Charities, it was on Mother's Day weekend. I think that's very telling. (laughs) I went to my husband. I ripped open the envelope, and it just said, there's someone that may have some information. If you'd like to reach out to us, we can give you more information. And I ran to my husband and said, you know, why now? And he said, I always knew she would be part of our life. And he has been so incredible with this. Obviously, he wasn't a part of my life then, but he has been so welcome and loving to Mary Beth and her family, as are my other two daughters. So I did meet Mary Beth. I did meet her adoptive parents. I have met her sister. We are in touch by phone frequently. She has just recently met her birth father's sisters and some other cousins. And another part of this puzzle is the fact that I had a lot of nieces and nephews that didn't know about Mary Beth. And when I heard from her and got this letter, you know, I was 17 again. I was back embarrassed, ashamed, and I thought, I need to move on, and this is a gift. I need to be able to deal with this in the correct way. So I did a little soul searching, and I did a lot of praying. I found a counselor who actually was adopted, had written a book about adoption. It was incredible. Her office was three blocks from where I worked. I went over and spoke to her several times. And then I wrote a letter to my nieces and nephews. And in that letter... Not only did I tell them about Mary Beth, but I wanted them to know that grandpa and grandma were not horrible people by making me do this. They did it out of love. And that's what you did back in those days. So Mary Beth is a big part of our lives. And I remember one of my nephews saying, it's just more people to love. And definitely, she is loved by all of us. And now I am so happy that she is meeting her birth father's family. And they also are finding out what a true gem she is. Just a true blessing. Thank you for sharing all of that. And I love how this story has come to a place of some level of closure in a sense after many, many years and of gift and blessing. Right. Can you use the word gem? Because right. You know her. Oh, yes. And you know her intimately now and well. Right. And you're close. 
and that's so beautiful. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go back. You talked about being ashamed. Right. And how that moment of getting the letter brought you back to that 17-year-old place. Right. Can we explore that for a minute? Because I know this has been a very long journey. Right. And I'd love for us to explore that time through now a little bit more deeply. Well, I was a senior in high school. I was 17. My mother, the wise woman that she was, knew, told me we would have a lunch date, took me to the doctor and our family doctor. Dr. Ed said, oh, Edna, she can go to school for a few months with those pleated skirts. No one will ever know. (laughs) But anyway, I went home with mom and she told my dad that was the only time I ever saw him cry. And that was, that's still hard. You know, it's something you don't ever want to see. It's your father cry. My mom told my siblings, it was just, you know, not what you wanted for yourself at this time. And when I would talk about it with people, even initially before I met Mary Beth, I would find myself back at that space. And you are ashamed. You don't want to be the girl that got pregnant. You don't want to be that rotten egg, if you will, or rotten apple in the barrel. But it is what it is. And it happens all the time. And I think going back to that 17 year old girl, I I remember just a few years ago, I was back in Sioux Falls, visiting with one of my girlfriend's parents who are in their 80s now. And they also were affected by adoption in their family. And the mother and I were talking and I actually brought Mary Beth with me to meet them. And as we were sitting there, the mother said to me, Elaine, your mother would be so proud. And I again, was 17, thinking, would she? But I know she would. I definitely did the right thing. Mary Beth as I said, is a wonderful person. And I never could have provided for her. I look at these young girls struggling now with these babies. Mary Beth has been blessed with an incredible voice. And I told her when we first met, I never would have been able to help you nurture that voice and become this beautiful singer and musician that you are today. I wouldn't have been able to afford piano lessons or voice lessons. It would have been a struggle every day. And that's why I hope that maybe some young girl who is in trouble will hear this and think there is an option. Adoption is out there for people and you will bless a family that wants a child beyond your wildest dreams. Yes. And it comes from a great sacrifice, as I know. And everyone listening may or may not already know I'm an adoptive mother. All of my children are adopted. Right. And so that's why this story touches my heart so deeply and in a very intimate way. And I want to talk about that and the sacrifice because here you were pregnant You got sent away to another state. You were with Catholic Charities. You were with the nuns, another pregnant young woman for six months. And then Mary Beth was born. Right. What was that like for you? Well, the home was run by, I think it's Benedicta nuns, but I'm not quite sure about that. But Sister Leona was the house mother. And she was a large German woman and looked so gruff. And she was such a kind spirit. Sister Leona just loved her. And we became such good friends. I mean, she was so kind to me and loved my family. My parents, someone from my family was there every week. I never went a week without a visitor. And that was a great sacrifice for my parents, my siblings. But every week I had someone there. And so my family got to know Sister Leona as well. But she was with me from the day that I arrived all the way through the delivery. And she was wonderful. At the villa where we lived, the doctor would come for our visits. And then 
when we went into labor, we went to the hospital and we were in these special rooms at the end of the hall. So we wouldn't see the other mothers and the other babies. But I had Mary Beth and she went off to the nursery. But it just so happens one of the other girls from the villa came in and delivered the same night. So I had a roommate when I was in the hospital and she had a boy. And we were in the hospital for five or seven days at the time. So we would get the babies and bring them into the room and feed them and talk to each other and say, maybe they're going to grow up and marry each other. (laughs) Wouldn't that be something? But the adoption was closed. So I would see her every day. I would feed her. I would walk down to the nursery. I remember my parents coming. I don't remember if I called them or sister did. Probably she did. And they came to the hospital that night, went down to the nursery. I remember my mother saying, she's a beautiful girl. Um, and then I remember leaving the hospital. And we I guess we were in the hospital seven days. And then we had to stay at the villa for three more because it had to be 10 days to sign the adoption papers. And my parents came to get me. And I said goodbye to Sister Leona. And then we went to this big, old, smelly building in Sioux City, Iowa, to sign the papers. And it was almost something out of a movie. I mean, it was old, old, antique furniture in this big old house. And you sign that paper, and you drove away, and that was it. And I remember saying to my mom, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. But that was it. I signed those papers, and then we never really talked about it again. And that was what you did. And we're sitting here so many years later, and I imagine that's still the most difficult thing you've ever done. It is. It really is. And, you know, the fact that you don't talk about it, my siblings, I mean, it affected all of us. And I didn't ever really think about that. I thought about myself and was hard on me, and I know it was hard on my parents, obviously. But it was also very hard on my siblings. And I don't think I really realized that until I was preparing for the retreat and going to share this story and really thought about how it affected the dynamic of the family. One of the things when I did meet Mary Beth, I did take my sister with me. I thought it would be weird to take my husband. He was very supportive, but I wanted my sister there who had been there through it with me. So it's been a blessing. Uh, Yes, it was difficult, but it's also been such a gift. Sure. And I know from our time together, too, there are many, many years in there in between the signing of the adoption papers and meeting and being with Mary Beth again from the last time that you saw her at the hospital right? to being with her again. It was 36 years when I met her. 36 years. And actually, it could be a lifetime movie. (laughs) It could. (laughs) I mean, I'm crying through this whole thing. It could be a lifetime movie. It could be. I mean, her parents wanted a child, were unable to have children. When I went to meet her parents, they showed me the pictures. Her mother had a scrapbook of the paperwork the classes they had to go through to obtain a baby, pictures of Mary Beth when they first got her that day. She was baptized that day because you couldn't travel with an unbaptized baby, right? They had her baptized in Sioux City and off they went. And they kept the scrapbook of all of this for Mary Beth to always look at. And she knew her whole life that she was adopted. I love that. And I believe in that so deeply. Each human person needs to know their own story and own their own story. Right. Because otherwise, going back to the shame and guilt, otherwise it makes it seem like it's something right. that shouldn't be told. And uh, I've mentioned that Mary Beth has a beautiful voice. And on one of our trips, we go to Yosemite usually every other year. And we were all there one year and we have a talent show at this old empty amphitheater that we go to. And we don't really have talent, but Mary Beth and her family do. <laughs> but we would go every year. So we went one year and we did our little skit and then Mary Beth and her family got up and sang a song. And then Mary Beth said, I want to dedicate the song to Elaine. She said, I used to sit in my bedroom window and sing this song and it's maybe from Annie. 
and she would look out the window and sing that. And that was such an incredible night. Here we were in the middle of paradise, the Sierra Nevada with the stars and the trees, and Mary Beth is singing that to me. It was amazing. A healing moment. Definitely. Definitely. As an adoptive parent, I think of and I pray for, and I feel deeply connected to my children's birth mothers. Right. And I was there when our littlest, close to when she was born and with her birth mother. Right. So in a sense, I don't know that sacrifice, but I know that sacrifice. And I also have been on the receiving end. So I know the gift of that sacrificial love because I'm a recipient. Right, right. When I met Mary Beth, I have a picture of the two of us. And she had Reese, her youngest, in her arms. And we are both just almost purple. We are so red with (laughs) joy and excitement and I think fear of the unknown, perhaps, because who knew how it would turn out? We had no idea what that other person was like, but it was beautiful. And we spent only 24 hours together because I wanted to make sure it would be okay and didn't want to be there for a week and not have anything to say or whatever. So we had 24 hours of just questions and answers and laughs and tears. And while we were there, she brought a gift from her dad and it was a letter that he had written to me and it was thanking me for the gift of Mary Beth and it was so beautiful I have the letter I just read it recently knowing that I was going to be talking with you and he mentioned I know how hard this was for you and how difficult it had to be for you to be in trouble for us to have this gift but we thank you every day oh And he said, don't we have a beautiful daughter? Oh, goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Which we do. I get that. And I get that on such a deep spiritual level. And I feel it important in my heart right now to say to listeners, because there are probably listeners who have been adopted, who have chosen adoption for their child or children, or in some way carry or connect with this story in a real lived way in their own lives. And not every story gets wrapped up in a lovely bow like this. Right. There are many, many birth children who meet their birth parents and it doesn't unfold in such a lovely way or other pieces of their story. Their adoptive family is just difficult. Right. Right. And this is a difficult story in a different way and is filled with sacrifice and sacrificial love. And the sacrificial love part is the part that so profoundly reflects God and in the messiness of life and walking with one another. This story encapsulates God's hopes, I believe, for each one of us. Right. And I just don't want anyone listening. I want you to know that if your story doesn't have this kind of ending, that that's okay. Right. And that we're praying for you and here for you. You can always reach out. And God provides healing and family and accompaniment and companionship in many ways in life. God is a creative God and a healing Lord. Absolutely. So we hope that for you. And Elaine, I know that you are a deeply faithful woman. And I love how you talk about the pleats and the, I mean, even though that is kind of ridiculous and funny at the same time, <laughs> the pleats, you know, the nuns, the cat. I wasn't right. raised Catholic. So man, this story's got there's so much color to it within the concept of even the Catholic church. <laughs> right. Right. So yet at the heart of it, as I said, it really reflects sacrificial love. All of these years, those 36 years in between now How do you relate to your faith, to this concept of sacrificial love, to God with your story? Well, God was definitely present through all of this. And I would say Mary was definitely with me. I was raised Catholic. I 
was then sent to a home through Catholic Charities. So we went to Mass several times a week. After Mary Beth was born, definitely every day I prayed for her, that she would be in a loving home, that she would be safe, that she would grow up to be a productive citizen. I prayed that I would get through it, and I did. And I am thankful every day for the decision that I made. And I couldn't have done that without divine intervention, whether it be Mary, whether it be our Lord, whoever it was, I was able to go through the steps, go through the pain, grow through it, through the faith in our Lord. My husband was able to be accepting of this. My children see her as a gift. And it's all definitely a divine intervention that it worked out the way it did. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And Elaine, thank you for being you. You're welcome, you, Lindy. <laughs> thank you, you. You are just a beautiful living testimony of goodness and faith. And people listening, many, many don't know you. And Elaine reflects a motherly love all the time, everywhere she goes. And women turn to her for care and consolation and just being in her presence is consoling. And so I want to thank you for that and for sharing this profoundly touching story with us. Thank you, Lindy. And Mary Beth, you are so loved. (laughs) You have all these people that love you so much. And I just think of Mary Beth as a little babe, vulnerable (laughs) in the world, you know, and how God blessed her with you and with her adoptive parents and all the family members, everyone like your husband and your parents and all these people, her siblings, all of her siblings. Right. It's just, it's very beautiful. It took a lot of people to be good and loving and to sacrifice for the story to unfold the way it did. Absolutely. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, God. Ultimately, thank you, God. Right. Thank you, God. Yes. So any last thoughts before we close? I just hope Lindy did reach out to listeners. I I really want people to know that adoption still is an option. And please remember that because I think there's so many young women who feel like they need to keep their children and it is such a struggle for everyone. And there are people, many people out there that are wanting a child that can provide. And it doesn't mean nowadays that you have to give up and not be a part of it that's all changed so please just keep adoption in your mind because it's definitely something that is out there for people yes thank you so much for sharing that and that's very powerful coming from you and as an adoptive parent I will just say anyone out there who's a mother knows there is no greater gift than the gift of your children and your people, your treasures, your family. And so know that you are giving the greatest gift of a lifetime that you could give. And there are many, many families out there hurting who cannot have children. Right. And so through the pain, through the difficulty, through the confusion, through the ultimately act of sacrificial love, you can make someone else's story filled with the deepest desire of their heart or their hearts. And that's a beautiful thing. So thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Lindy. And let us close in prayer. Would you like to close or would you like me to? I figured. (laughs) (laughs) Poor you. You've shared from your soul. (laughs) We'll give you a break over there. Okay. This won't be in the podcast. (laughs) I say that and sometimes I put it in. (laughs) Okay. Dearest Lord, your grace abounds. You are so good and your Holy Spirit transforms any circumstance in any situation. And we want to thank you and praise you that all of these people that are part of this story and especially Elaine here chose to follow you 
and to reflect your great sacrificial love. And we just pray for everyone listening, wherever they are, Lord, however they needed to be touched by this story that they are and that any support that they need, that they are blessed with that support and that ultimately each one of our hearts are just cracked open a little bit more to let you in more fully. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Know you can reach out anytime if you want more information about adoption or if you're struggling on your journey and you want prayers or any other means of support that I'm here for you and will help to do my best to point you in the most loving and life-giving direction. And I'd love if you take a moment to share this episode in Mamas in Spirit with someone you love can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.